Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. In today's video we'll be going over how these five items can help take your build to the next level. Let's get started. By the end of this video you will know all the techniques in order to create something similar to this, which is much better than just a plain wall. First of all, let's give you an introduction into what the five items are. First up, we have a big concrete pillar. Each one of these is four meters by four meters by four meters. Next, we have a small concrete pillar. This is two meters by two meters by four meters. And this is a painted beam. You can also get a metal beam. And these can be done at various heights at one meter increments if you're using the default build mode or you can use the freeform build mode which pretty much take it to whatever length you want but ideally you need to snap it to something to, in order to do that and this is one meter by one meter this is just a simple road barrier this is just a simple beam connector this is for your metal beams and your painted beams to attach to. Here is the first example and what I've done is I've used the painted beam as an alternative to using foundations as the flooring. To do this all you need to do Let's take out the floor, get yourself a big concrete pillar, let's take out another piece of floor because I'm going to need a bit of space for this, big concrete pillar or small concrete pillar, let's place it down, get yourself a beam connector and what you need to do is you need to place this beam connector just under the, just above the height of the big pillar place that down and then get yourself a painted beam, attach it to the uh, beam connector and then take that across. And to make things quicker to do the rest of the floor you just take another beam over in the other direction and you can snap all your other beams to the beam travelling in the opposite direction. and then you can just paint your beams whatever colour you like. <clears throat> and there you go, an alternative floor design. Just remove the uh, beam travelling in a different direction, put your floor back in and there you go, different floor style. In our second example, what I've done is I've utilised the road barriers in order to place these doors down in a half space difference to the foundations. And then I've used the small concrete pillar in order to hide the, the rest of the mechanism to do with the door. I'll quickly show you how to do that. What you do, grab a road barrier, and you place it down halfway over the foundation. On each side, you take a automated gate and while looking at the road barrier, hold down control, make sure it's facing the right way, and then place. And what it will do is it will replace the road barrier. Do that again to the other side. And then what I've done is I've just used the concrete pillars just to cover up the mechanism, just to give you a different look, but still you know, having an automated door. Um, and as simple as that really. For the horizontal uh, pillar there, what I've done, is I've literally just placed the pillar there and placed the pillar on the side and brought it across. And that is that example. In the next example, what I've tried to do is create a, a bit more depth to a wall by creating this half foundation increment difference from the front wall to the back wall. 
what I've done here is I've just placed a road barrier halfway on a foundation and then filled in the gap using big metal pillars and then framed the outside using painted beams. I'll quickly show you how to do that now. Put the road barrier down in the middle of the foundation. Select your wall, press control over the road barrier. Take your wall up as high as you like. Bring another wall across to the side to the normal snapping point of the wall. Take it up. Get your big metal pillar, fill in the gap. And then you can use your painted beam to come up and frame it. Just put it in the right place. You can take your beam connectors and put them on the corners. If you're wondering how I'm picking my items so quickly, I'm just pressing the middle mouse wheel on my uh, mouse for quick selection of items that I'm wishing to build. Here is another example of a similar kind of technique as the last example. This time I've just used the foundations as they normally would be. And I've literally just put a beam, uh, not a beam, a, a column in the middle. And just created depth that way. It just breaks up a plain wall, nice and simple, just like that. You can paint the inside of this a different colour just to make it pop a bit more and give you a bit more variety in a wall. Moving on to some painted beams and some more concrete pillars here. What you can do is you can take a painted beam and we'll keep this one standard for this time. Take that to wherever you want it to, and then you can paint, put a concrete pillar on top, and this will follow the path that you've already created for the painted beam. So much like the one in the background, if I change the build mode to diagonal, and then place the concrete pillar on the end, and then extend it off, it will follow the same angle. It can come in quite useful when creating custom supports for say a bridge or a floating building. This is a slightly different take on the same thing. If you grab the painted beam and then extend it off, what you can do is when you get your concrete pillar, if you press control and then roll the middle mouse wheel, you can rotate the concrete pillar on the end and then extend that off. Now you've got this angle and then you've got the angle of the concrete pillar when it's twisted like that. Makes things a bit more interesting. Here we are again with the painted beams, but this time what we've done is we've utilised them so that we can place signs in any orientation that we like. Whether it be upside down, right side up, or left or right. You can't ordinarily place signs on the underside of a foundation or a ceiling as it just turns into sort of like a sign on a post if you like, um, which is not helpful to us. What you can do is you can take the painted beam and make your make a little shape with it, and then you can place your signs on the inside of that shape, on whichever side you like. And they will always face the side that you're facing it. So you can either put it all the way around the outside here. This is what I did in this example here, where I've done just a simple sort of upside down V shape and place the lights on the inside. It creates a nice sort of doorway, archway area and then just place these concrete pillars on the outside.
here we are utilizing the collar, uh, the pillar this time in order to rotate these signs. Ordinarily when you want to place these signs on something they won't want to rotate. As you can see I'm scrolling my mouse wheel and they don't want to turn. Even if you press control it just stays horizontal like this. In order to angle a, a sign what you need to first need to do is you need to get the concrete pillar and you need to get the bottom of it or the top or bottom of it as a, and face it towards you and then what you can do is rotate your signs on that the way I made this sign is I, I literally just did this over and over until I got the full circle and then obviously painted it in but that is how you utilize a pillar to help you rotate signs in whichever which way you want Here we are with just a few examples of some simple custom lighting stands if you like rather than using just uh, the flood height like this you can create your own style that is also closer to the ground because that's quite obviously high up and these are it's nice and simple really I used the beam technique from earlier on over here to create the legs here that's just simple Sort of stacking of the beams there. This is just placement of the beams, so put a painted beam there, painted beam there, and then use the frame beam, frame pillar there. You will need to place the wall first on, uh, not the wall, uh, you'll need to place a floodlight first on a wall before you can do shapes like this. By that I mean, let's grab a wall. Get your light, put it down, delete the wall, then create your custom pillar if you like. Just like that. Finish those off. So place your wall and your lights first, remove the wall, and then you can create your custom. Uh, stand if you like. This is just simple concrete, big concrete pillar stacked one on top of the other with the light just sitting on it. I do like this one because the power connector is here and the cable goes, adds to the structure and goes down in the middle. I've got that clipping through and it goes up to the underside of these foundations here. Here we have an example of how the beams can be used to place your beam connectors and your road barriers anywhere you like. So if we first of all take a concrete pillar here, go up, and then take a beam connector, you can see I can place that anywhere on that beam, but still maintaining the left and right lock if you like, and that can just go anywhere. And what you can do is you can take a painted beam, you come out four meters with it, and you can take a foundation and clip that to the beam and you'll finish right next to the beam like that but it allows you to put a floor at any height you like uh, using this method you can create some custom stairs I've, I've made some custom stairs in the past using this method um, it's just a nice way of being able to place anything at any height when I made my horizontal uh, spiral pipeline design. I utilised this design, uh, this method, in order to place the bottom pipe support as the normal height snapping points were just slightly off. Just get this out of the way and I'll show you what happens when we use the road barriers in conjunction with the pillars. When you have the road barriers you can place them anywhere on here. Again, you've still got a sort of front to back lock but you can place them anywhere and then utilizing this you can do the same thing what we did earlier on and you can press control and those walls will snap onto those uh, road barriers and you can place walls literally wherever you like so placing walls and floors at whatever height you like and whatever angle really
with everything that I've shown you today you should be able to easily construct a building such as this or a wall such as this. This utilizes the lights on the painted beam just there. It has, the, it has a quarter step inset using the small concrete pillars in order to cover the gap and this whole archway is created using beams and pillars so when it came to the archway I place down a beam connector first come along with a painted beam go into default mode and go straight up that gives me my center point and then I'll move to build mode diagonal go from the beam connector go up to the max length and then come across until it allows you to build so here I can't build but here I can and just continue that down the left and down the right and then you take a concrete pillar this one was using small concrete pillars I took that on the end and I did two stops one two in one direction and then I did two in the other direction so it would be four from this count one two three four that's the wrong direction one two three four there you go so that is that's how that patterning is being created And then all we do is we bring that pattern all the way down to the bottom. And then I would delete just the concrete pillars all the way up. I think in this design I had two, so just like that. And the way you get the arch with the big pillars gets quite complicated. But try to put it simply. Um, you get a big metal pillar, come down, come to there, put a pillar on the side, remove the original pillar, put another pillar on the side there, and then you have the basics of that whole construct there. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more tutorial videos such as this. Thank you.